Since I started publishing GigaLaw's Domain Dispute Digest more than two years ago, I've been reporting every quarter about the increase in the number of domain name disputes the trademark owners have been filing and overwhelmingly winning. The same is true today, but this time, in the second quarter 2022 edition of the Digest, something unusual happened. A significant spike in the number of decisions not only under the UDRP, the Uniform Domain Name Dispute Resolution Policy, but also under the URS, the Uniform Rapid Suspension System. But this is not all good news for trademark owners, as I'll explain in a minute. So the URS, as you may know, and as I've talked about many times before, including in episode 12 of my masterclass on domain name disputes, is an alternative dispute policy that was created by ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, in response to the launch of the new global or generic top-level domains, or new GTLDs, a number of years ago. The URS is very similar in substance to the UDRP's three-part test, but it is less expensive and a little quicker. Still, despite these advantages, the URS has never really been attractive to trademark owners, in large part because it only allows for the temporary suspension of a disputed domain name, unlike the UDRP, which enables a trademark owner to obtain the transfer of a domain name, which of course can be a permanent solution to a cyber squatting problem. Also, and perhaps the most significant limitation of the URS is that it does not apply to .com domain names. So the UDRP is usually the only option for the most problematic cyber squatting situations. But suddenly this quarter, something changed. The number of URS decisions jumped a whopping 80% over the same period from a year ago. And the total number of disputed domain names in those URS cases, since a single case can include multiple domain names, rose an amazing 202.4% year over year. Still, the total number of URS cases remains relatively low when compared with the number of UDRP cases. Despite the increase, there were only 45 URS decisions in the quarter as compared to 1,786 UDRP decisions, meaning that when the two policies are looked at together, URS cases uh, only account for about 2.5% of all decisions. Regardless, the increase in the number of URS cases would seem to indicate that trademark owners have discovered some newfound reason for using it. But a deeper dive into the data, which is included in this issue of GigaLaw's Domain Dispute Digest, contains a warning about the URS. Trademark owners won only 69.1% of URS cases in the quarter as compared with a more than 95% success rate under the UDRP. In other words, trademark owners may be turning to the URS more frequently, but they're much less likely to get the legal relief they want. And it's not as if the URS is only being used by uninformed trademark owners, because as I note in the digest, some very well-known brands lost their URS cases this quarter, including Dyson, Reddit, Warner Brothers, and Philip Morris, each of which, by the way, has had multiple successes under the UDRP when they've filed their complaints under that policy in the past. So my guess is that some trademark owners are not fully aware of what it takes to win a URS case, which is typically more challenging than winning a UDRP case, given that the URS has very strict filing requirements and a higher burden of proof. For example, in a URS case filed and lost by Warner Brothers, involving the Ted Lasso trademark this quarter, the URS examiner wrote, under the URS, the complainant is held to a high standard of proof of clear and convincing evidence. Contrary to the UDRP, the URS is a unique process to be used in the most blatant domain name cyber squatting with a short 500 words limit for the complaint. The complainant must, within the limits of the URS, explain each of the three elements necessary to be satisfied under the URS. In the present case, complainant failed to provide any explanation why registrant has registered the domain name in bad faith. While there appear to be evidence showing bad faith use, this is insufficient to fully comply with the URS. And also, in a URS ca uh, case filed by Reddit, which operates what has been described as the ninth most visited website in the world, 
The examiner denied relief because the complainant apparently had failed to include adequate evidence of the respondent's website. Now, fortunately, the URS doesn't preclude a losing trademark owner from later filing a UDRP complaint, so it will be interesting to see if any of these cases end up being disputed again under the UDRP itself, which is more accommodating and, as I said, had a success rate for trademark owners in the quarter of more than 95% instead of the disappointing 69.1% success rate for the URS. As for UDRP cases this quarter, as I said at the outset, they continued to rise in record numbers with a 10.4% spike in the number of decisions, with more cases being decided at almost all of the UDRP service providers. And if this trend continues for the rest of 2022, we're likely to see a ninth consecutive year of growth in the UDRP. Finally, the digest also includes data on a variety of other issues of interest to trademark owners dealing with cyber squatters, including a list of the largest UDRP complaints, which were filed by Morgan Stanley, Twitter, and Tommy Hilfiger, companies in obviously very different industries, lists of the most frequently disputed top-level domains, which include the new GTLDs.shop, dot online and dot store, and much more. So to see all of the data and read more about my analysis of domain name dispute trends, you can download a free copy of GigaLaw's Domain Dispute Digest at www.giga.law slash digest. And if you want to learn more about the UDRP, please check out my masterclass on domain name disputes, as well as other resources on my GigaLaw website. And be sure to subscribe to the GigaLaw YouTube channel to be notified of future videos discussing other internet legal issues. Thanks for watching and see you next time online.